Welcome everyone, Costini here with a discussion about Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires to talk about Kislev Poor. Kislev, one of the worst factions in the game at the moment, one of the worst unit rosters, bad economy, bad mechanics, but it gets even worse. One of the things I've realized that quite a few other people have realized long before me is that playing a campaign in Kislev as Kislev is a waste of your time. Now, the cities themselves, Kislev, Prague, Erengrad, they're absolutely worth it. The Oblasts, however, are not. Troll Country, Western Oblast, Eastern Oblast, because all they have is minor settlements, the economy that you'll get from the structures uh, in these Oblasts is going to be relatively weak. Because, well, even at Tier 3, with a bunch of faction upgrades and um, special buildings across the faction, you're just not going to generate a significant amount of money and you might end up spending a significant amount of money in return to make them worthwhile in any way, shape or form. The Southern Oblast is actually a bit the exception, but the Western one, the Troll Country and Eastern one, yeah, don't bother with that. The Eastern o Oblast wouldn't be too dissimilar from the Southern one, but it's very, very exposed. And this is where we have to talk about one of the problems that screws over Kislev the most. As Kislev, you are incentivized by the mechanics of your faction that in order to win the campaign, you need devotion. You gain devotion by fighting chaos. So you might naturally assume that your campaign should take you north. But that's absolutely the worst possible thing you could do. Forget the mechanics of the faction. Forget any issues that Kislev itself as a faction has, because there are many issues. The terrain is actually going to be your biggest headache. Let me explain. So, the Eastern Oblast has three main avenues of attack. So, enemies can and will absolutely run in circles around you and you are going to be running around trying to catch them while they burn your settlements to the ground again and again and again if you try and defend the Eastern Oblast. Here it's been burned to the ground. I burned it to the ground. No one else. I did that. And because I decided, you know what? Trying to hold the East is a waste of time. Much better to hold them at this choke point at the bridge of Prague, because they're not going to get past that choke point. Or even worse, if you try and go for the Frozen Landing region, though the Frozen Landing is a great settlement because a lot of Ca cafe and caravans go there so you can earn a lot of money in your campaign early on but the worst possible thing would be to either hold uh, the eastern oblast or frozen landing because you're just going to create for yourself a huge amount of territory that is very exposed so why bother with it why take it i mean or if you want to take it take it and leave it like abandon it plain and simple it's not worth holding it's not worth the investment it's not worth your time uh, and energy it's one of the worst possible things you could do as Kislev, let alone heading into the Chaos Waste. I've mentioned before that if you're playing Boris Ursus, the best thing you can do in your campaign is to abandon your starting region. What I really should have realized is that the best thing as Boris Ursus and as Kostaltin and Katrin, the best thing you can do playing Kislev is to abandon Kislev in its entirety, not the special cities. Let's be clear on this. But the special cities, they've got strong garrisons. They've got special structures. They're absolutely worth keeping. Uh, keeping, And you need them anyway. You need them not just because the structures themselves give you significant benefit, but also because you need them for the sake of research. Some of the best research you have available in factions. So you want to keep a hold of those special cities. Or you want to have military allies that have a hold of them, but generally you want to keep them for yourself. But the Oblasts themselves, and Norska in general, is so badly designed at the moment, so very exposed, that it is practically impossible to have any good campaign if you are playing as Kislev. In Kislev. Instead, the best thing you can do as Kislev is to go to war with the Empire and conquer large swaths of the Empire for your own benefit. This has numerous benefits beyond just territory that's far safer, because you've got the dwarves. The dwarves don't hate you as Kislev. They might make alliances. Like, for instance, here, I've got an alliance fixed. with uh, Karakadrin. Uh, Zufbard 
uh, is about to declare war on me or I'm about to declare war on them. But generally speaking, if you are going to go into Sylvania or Sterland or Ostermark or Averland, you're going to have much better territory that's actually going to produce some better economy for you. But how is that? It's not like the economic structures change, but they do. See, the Imperial Territory has a bunch of resource structures, like Northern Sylvania has a lumber yard, which gives you an income, which beyond the income it produces, it also produces trade goods, so your trade goes up and gives you farms. Ostermark has, a, has kilns, and uh, which increases the income of your shitty markets. But on top of that, it has um, cattle ranches, which increase the income from your farms. And it's through these structures, through these special resource structures, or uh, Vintier, that I've been able to actually get a pretty decent economy. <laughs> Even then, it's still a pretty crap economy for me as, uh, as Kislev. Now, of course, going for this territory, or going for the gold mine that Azak has over here, or fighting Draka, although fighting Draka is an absolute nightmare, but you can take advantage of, of, the, of some situations. Like, she's going to declare war on Ostermark. Just park your army near Ostermark when she starts besieging it. Wipe her out, basically, with the garrison of Ostermark. Just take her out and take the griffin with lots of money from that. Deal with Azak. You may want to deal with Azazel and Frot, but once that's done, once Azazel and Frot are do down and Trog has been slapped around a bit, just ignore the north. Ignore Kislev. Like, if you're playing as Kalstalten, give Katrin... Uh, troll country and hell even the western oblast maybe even uh, or the brotherhood of the Bre bear which you can save if you're playing castalt and give them azizel's territory and let them hold the line for you while you go around and conquer the bloody empire because the resources of the empire are going to be great there's gold mines gold mi gold mines generate an enormous amount of gold 600 gold you will need that gold kislev has a significant problem when it comes to their economy and you need solutions for that. The best possible thing you can do is to just go for empire. This actually goes even, this actually gets even more stupid, believe it or not. Because going after the empire, conquering imperial territory, will actually make the empire stronger. I'm not joking in this. Why is that? Well, because, well, let's say I took out, I took out Balthazar Keltier, right? I took his province. But this province is now worth uh, holding for me. Because it's only two regions, it's not, it doesn't have any special structures, though it does say, oh, it has a strategic location, but you don't get the wine market if you're playing Skisa, maybe you should. But you don't get the wine market. So it's like, okay, hey, friends, you want to have an entire region? Oh, great. You give, you start making deals with Talabekland or Talabayam and... Um, in uh in carl france and you start giving them territory that you don't need for instance here midland i don't want to hold midland it would be a great region but it's like it's also a very exposed region i don't want to worry about that so it's like oh give it to talibayam make deals with the empire get paid to make deals with the empire and actually make the empire stronger like or, or over here i'm going to take hockland right here right for instance let's go take uh mindenstag stag whatever Right, fight the battle, no problem. The army I have is uh, is uh, pretty strong. Okay, fair enough. Like maybe I, I won't be able to win now, or I don't want to lose so many men, so I would have to fight them. But if I take that territory, right? If I end up taking that territory, then I can trade it. Like you, you can do region trading, get diplomatic relations. For instance, one of the things I might want from Tal uh, Talabayam would be needling. So just trade that over there. Yes. Because Turland is uh, worth having because of the winery. And start getting structures over there. Now what's also hilarious, Karak Heron has taken Damn. over um, Averheim here. I'm going to declare war on them soon enough. You, you benefit the Empire. Like, I'm going to declare war on them, but I'm not going to keep their territory. The territory of Averheim is useless. Like, the moot uh, might be worth it, assuming you can get the special structure. I have no idea if you can or not. I'll discover that soon enough. Uh, but Averland is not worth it for you. But it is worth it for your good old friend, Franz. You are the true unifier of the Empire. And it's just... I'm sorry, this is incredibly silly in a lot of ways. It just feels like an incredibly silly way 
to play the campaign. And actually, um, but you end up being stronger for it because your economy is stronger. You can maintain more armies. Um, you can maintain more armies. You can get more money for the structures you're going to need. But here's the problem with this. Beyond it being silly against the lore, against you know the sentiments a lot of us might have, because yeah, Kislev shouldn't be fighting the Empire. Beyond the that, beyond those kind of issues, it will also screw you over in a lot of ways because you're flying in the face of what Kislev should be doing and what the campaign was designed to do. Because devotion is one of your key resources, your special faction resource, and if you are running around conquering the Empire and not fighting Yaz, you're not going to generate devotion. And that's going to end up hurting you in a significant fashion. See, devotion isn't just used for supporters. I can talk about supporters in just a second. Devotion is also used for all those special lovely structures that are in Kislev cities. It's also used for the uh, churches that allow you to recruit patriarchs, which are good, really good healer, healers. And, well, good heroes and healers and combatants. So you want churches. You need devotion. You need devotion uh, for the structures and you need devotion for the supporter system. If you're running around dealing with Azak, Draka, and Sylvania, you're not going to generate devotion. And that means you're going to fall behind. And you need devotion to win the supporter race because you need to win the supporter race to win your campaign. Sure, you could just conquer Sylvania, for instance, and just go north. But going north is just, you're just wasting your time. You're only doing that for the sake of devotion. You're not doing it because you want the territory. You want you want to bother with the factions there. Like the whole thing like as Kislev is you... Put in just enough effort so that Kostaltin or Katrin, if you're playing Kostaltin, or both of them if you're playing Boris, you just put in just the minimal amount of effort so that they don't die. And then you go off gallivanting around the Empire being uh, a conqueror or a liberator. And you help unite the Empire. You help unite the Empire because you, you give territory that you don't need. You give that to Karl Franz or Talibayim or both. And eventually, Karl Franz is probably going to confederate with some of these factions. None shall question me. And it ends up being so. Because you're flying in the face. Like, this is the problem. Sponge. To succeed hey. as Kislev, hey. as any legendary lord as Kislev, even Boris, don't waste your time here. It's a genuine miser misery of a campaign. The smarter option, the good option, the easier option, whatever, is to go for Sylvania. Go for Azak, go for Draka, conquer the Ostermark, because it's a great province. It's gen going to generate more gold for you than any other province, Like, uh, then, because it's a four-region province. Two-region provinces are not worth it, but a four-region province with two special economic structures? Oh yes, absolutely uh, worth it. So it ends up being very, very silly. But of course, you then have the issue with devotion, Unless you use a mod to fix that for you, and then you stop giving a shit about Norska altogether. There's a mod called, and I'm gonna name it in the description of this video, you can search it on the Steam Workshop. There's a mod literally called Devotion from All Enemies. So, even fighting Skaven, Sylvania, and Greenskins, you still get Devotion. Hell, even fighting Empire, you get Devotion. I feel the Devotion system is just... A pile of crap honestly because it go the price of it goes up unless you get an event to reduce it by 50 percent though that's random um but the devotion cost goes up the more settlements you have not the more provinces you have the more settlements you have and it's much better to conquer sylvania hell even conquer the mountains here or at least a portion of it not all of it maybe give the capital here to ungram so he can defend you from whatever comes from the silver pinnacle maybe take the silver pinnacle for yourself and then give it to ungram because he's gonna be your shield uh, your eastern shield you don't need this like especially as catherine you don't need to hold the capital to maintain your control though sure con controlling the entire province would be ideal but it's probably best in some ways or to trade uh, this one for the Silver Pinnacle for Ungram, if you can. It cements my power. But we don't stop there. Let's also talk about Kislev's many roster issues. There's a mod called War and Upgrade that I'm using here. That's why I've got Sargard, Armor Kassar, Streltsy, all that heavy war sleds. 
So I've got the great army variety. That's great. Here's the problem. <clears throat> Here's the problem with this. Or multiple problems with this. First off, it's reliant on a mod. If I didn't have the mod, I'd just be running around by this point at the turn 58. I'd be running around with just uh, Kossars and maybe armor Kossars. Certainly not Sargard. Um, maybe some Streltsy, but not Griffin Legion or anything like that. So that's uh, one of the issues that Kislev ha has. It's uh, because they have an issue with recruitment. Because well, since many of the uh, settlements in Kislev itself are... Uh, minor settlements, or pretty much all of them, except the big cities, are minor settlements. And because you need the uh, the building slots for other structures, like for instance, uh, you need the Mason's Guild, you need the Dwarven District, like the mar the Merchant uh, Line in Kislev, and then of course the Tannery. You need to get these for your economic benefits. But then you want to get the special structures, so you mean it means you won't have as much for unit recruitment. Oh yeah, I can use Prague for that. But running around to Prague and back to recruit units it can be an issue. But here's the problem with Kislev. Their Kossar units are pretty awful. They're, especially with the way ranged works right now, their regular Kossars, their cheapest units, are just not good. Goblin archers are better in effectively every way. They're cheaper, they're almost just as effective in combat, and you can mass them far in a far more significant fashion. What about the melee units? They're okay, they're decent, but against the Norskan Berserkers, which you will be fighting, or the, against many of the factions that you'll be fighting, they just fall behind. Warsleds are great, Sargard is decent, again, not great, but decent, uh, and Iceguard is decent. Like, th that's the thing, Kislev only has a few good units, and generally it's the Baryons, the Warsleds, the, uh, the War Bear Riders, the Elemental Bear, not the Little Grom. The little Grom has a lot of issues when it comes uh, when it comes to being used as the, an artillery piece, but it's your only artillery piece. But what this all means is that in a lot of battles, you're going to be very weak. You're going to be very weak because range right now is pretty screwed over. There are some mods apparently that allow you to uh, that kind of fix the issue, but. I mean, at what point does a fa are you still playing the game, and at one point are you just playing the community version of the game? Because I feel like I've already passed that threshold, and like we're we're just gonna go even further. Like, it's one thing to have mods that affect public order or remove the public penalty. It's one thing to use the devotion mod, but if we're starting to use mods that genuinely affect the way battles are being fought then that's starting to become a real issue with the way the game is. But here's the one big problem is Kislev with their entire unit roster. The biggest issue that they actually have. They don't have fucking siege. The only siege unit that they actually have are little groms. But guess what? Little groms are a tier 4 uh, unit. They're really hard to get. In fact, I've only been able to get start getting them at about 50 turns or so in the campaign. You'll be fighting sieges long, long before that. And your game plan with sieges is absolutely horrible if you're playing as Kislev. But why is that? Well, you don't have the melee units, and this is the po the reason I made the point about like Kossars not being uh, just being decent. And same with Sargard. And let's not even get about Streltsy in a siege. Gunpowder is absolutely ho shit in a siege. Just look at my most recent video on ranged combat. So yeah, your situation in a siege is. Atrocious. Your good army, your field army, like things like Warsled, Streltsy, Targard, they will do horribly in pretty much any siege environment. It gets to the point where you don't ever want to fight the siege manually. Instead, you want to be in such a situation that you're literally auto resolving things or you're fighting the army outside. But that's because you have no way, really, effectively, to bring down the walls, to bring down the wall towers until you start getting little groms. Or unless you get an outpost for the sake of uh, allied recruitment. Though, believe it or not, that can bite you in the ass in a lot of ways. The reason that bites you in the ass is for two big reasons. One, you re you're reliant on your allies to get the structures to do it. And, well, look at the situation when it comes to it, right? I haven't built a single outpost because uh, I haven't seen a reason for it so far. But look at uh, Carl Franz, right? I can't get one in uh, in Altdorf, and in Nuln he doesn't 
uh, have an artillery uh, an artil artillery uh, location and if we uh, look at uh, if we look at uh, Altdorf itself he also doesn't have an artillery piece he's not producing artillery which is a pretty big deal by the Empire we can talk about the issues of the Empire but you will you may have issues getting artillery even from your allies let alone producing it yourself which means that the siege situation is going to be bad factions that can do well in sieges um, without artillery are generally factions that have great um, melee capability you don't have great melee capability now you could argue well the high elves you know the high elves have issues because there because it can be an issue getting the artillery yeah, it can be a, a pain to get artillery as the High Elves. It's one of the things that actually affects Syrian. But you want to compare the range capability of the High Elves versus the range capability of Kislev? Hell, you want to even compare the melee capability of the High Elves versus the range cap uh, the melee capability of Kislev? Because we can get in that discussion and how the High Elves blowing out of the water in every single singular way. So you have a, a major issue with your battle tactics and sieges. What about... Even if you break down the gates, even if you're wasting your time, just like the, the only thing you can do really in siege is like it's not building towers or building rams. That's a pointless thing. I have not built a single tower or ram in any of the campaigns I've played so far because what's the point? I don't want to go on the walls. That's a surefire way of getting my units killed. Um, I don't want to use the scaling ladder for all the discussion people have had about the asset ladders. They're, I feel they're, they're pretty pointless. Instead, and break down, like the rams, like break down the gate, I can do that anyway. If, as long as I have siege attacker. No, you need an effective way to break down the walls and break down the wall towers. And you don't have that. Th therein lies the issue. You want to compare things? Like, look at Norska uh, as a comparison. Norska may not have a way of dealing with the, the wall towers. You know what Norska has? They have incredibly powerful melee units that can... Uh, absolutely annihilate everything in their path. Don't even get me started on Skaven and the many options they have for sieges. Or the Warriors of Chaos who get an ability to literally burn, uh, burst down the walls. And even if they didn't have that ability, Shatterstone is not the reason Warriors of Chaos are so damn great right now. Uh, even if they didn't have that ability, it still wouldn't matter because they just clump up all their melee units, rush through the gates, slaughter everything in their path because they can. They absolutely can, and you just end up, um, you just end up being very, very weak compared to that. I mean, it's an issue for the Empire as well. Don't get me wrong, but guess what? If you're playing the Empire, you get artillery. You can get artillery pretty quickly. Even though you have many of the same issues, actually, if you're playing that as Empire as Kislev, like the many, many of the same issues in terms of the Union's roster. Like, the Empire is a pretty bad. Bot, but Kislev is worse in every singular way because like the Kislev like the melee line that Kislev has is a, let's say on the same relative strength level as the Empire the ranged is on the same relative strength level with the exception of Iceguard fair enough the only advantage Kislev has over the Empire are the bear units that's about it though you want to talk about cavalry I mean the yeah, sure, your sleds are better than their wagons. But you want to talk about cal uh, cavalry, demigriffs versus war bears? We can have that discussion. But the Empire has a much better economy, a much better situation to deal with, much better provinces to tackle for all the, the issues. Like, honestly, if... Like, honestly, if the Empire wasn't so screwed because of the limitations of the Imperial Authority system, they would be in a pretty damn good spot. Uh, in a lot, in a bunch better spot. It's really Imperial Authority that screws over Karl Franz and Balthazar Gelt more so than anything else right now. Well, that and the weak melee line uh, that they do currently have. But they have options. They have choices. You just don't have those choices. Issues with terrain... Uh, or issues with provinces, issues with the economy. Like, your economy is weak by default. Like, your markets only generate 100. Your farms only generate 50. You can buff it up. You can absolutely buff it up and get to a somewhat decent level. But you're never going to get past that decent level. That's all you're going to have. Like, what does Kislev have going for it? A mediocre army, a weak economy, bad faction mechanics for the supporter system. And the best thing you can do if you're playing Kislev is to ignore the supporter system or use a mod so 
you're ignoring the spirit anyway of the supporters system even with them even with the mod because the idea is right you're supposed to fight chaos but w there's no value in fighting chaos there's no value going after archeon hell there's no value even encountering archeon the worst thing you could do is encounter archeon and encounter uh his doom stacks as Kislev, because he's gonna wipe you out unless uh, you're ready for it. He'll have a better economy, more armies, more powerful units, and you won't have an answer to it. Stay the hell away. What's even worse about it is you can't try and save Boris Ursus. And with Castalton, you don't want him to die, but uh, the best thing you could do, uh, it would, the best thing you can do is just give him the minimal support required for him to hold the line. Or if you're playing Castalt and give Catherine the minimum support for her to hold the line, take Prague for yourself. Uh, actually, if you're playing Castalt, you might have a much, much better time uh, than, than poor old Catherine. But yeah, plenty of problems as they currently stand with Kislev. What do they need? Well, the province, the entire terrain here, I feel. Man, I'm not sure Creative Assembly would do it, but from my perspective, the provinces here really desperately need a rework. This little uh, sea gap is an absolute nightmare. Let's not even talk about the small river here. And I have seen entire armies getting stuck over here when trying to cross the, the river uh, over on this side. Or the many downsides of Karak Vlag. And if you don't want to defend Karak Vlag, fair enough. Uh, the Eastern Oblast with its free entrances. Or Troll Country. You might think, oh, it's just a, a pass. Well, it's it's a large amount of terrain that's not defensible. It's, and it's not even worth it to put in the effort to try and defend it. I think there's something completely and inherently wrong with the faction if your best campaign plan as any faction, as any of the legendary lords. doesn't matter if you're talking about Castalt and Catherine or Boris. Though Boris is in the best situation, but even then, as him, the worst thing you can do is fight for Kislev. Don't fight for Kislev. Fight for the Kislev cities, fair enough. But the rest of it, they can burn. They can be burned to the ground and we're not going to lose anything uh, for it. It's a sad state of affair, but I think actually a lot of the factions that Creative Assembly introduced in Warhammer 3, with the exception of Cafe and to an extent Ogres, but a lot of them desperately need major reworks. We're probably not going to get that. Let's be clear on that. It would be silly in a lot of ways to get to a point where the factions that were the most recently created. But they do. Or they need buffed. Or what Kislev needs. Beyond just major reworks through their mechanics. Though I think that's very much warranted in itself. What Kislev needs desperately is... Um, they need a better economy, a much better economy, especially from the cities of Kislev. Those cities, are maybe an extra economic structure that could generate just as much as the uh, merchant line or a major buff to the merchant line. You want to compare the merchant line to... Um, you want to compare the merchant line to what the Dark Fortress gets? Because here's the thing, like while the economic benefit is about the same, the difference between a Dark Fortress and what Kislev gets is that the Dark Fortress also has many structures that buff the economy through the roof of that of a settlement like that. You can get some benefits, true, 10% uh, income from uh, all buildings, local region, through the Smithery, for instance, but compare that to the 50% plus benefit that the uh, Warriors of Chaos can get through the single Dark Fortress, yeah, it starts and uh, starts being pretty bloody ridiculous, and that's for the special cities. The minor cities are even worse because you all you have is this um, caravan system. Yes, you can generate a good amount of tradable resource production, but trade is not going to ma is not going to be so significant for Kiso because you don't have like the many high elven benefits for trade to make that extremely worthwhile. So even if you were to generate a lot of trade resources, it wouldn't end up working. But yeah, they need a better economy. They need multiple ways of gaining devotion. Maybe not the Empire. <laughs> I think that's the, that's silly. But I see no reason why Kislev shouldn't generate devotion uh, from fighting things like Greenskins, Vampire uh, Counts. Or, you know, especially Skaven. Because aren't Skaven aligned to faction? Oh yes, they are aligned 
with uh, with chaos. Uh, the, like Gardenscape and the Line Chaos, they are aligned with chaos. So the fact that they don't generate devotion is a silly situation. But crucially, from my perspective, I think Kislev needs to have a reason to care about Kislev itself. Not just the cities of Kislev, but Kislev as a whole. You don't have a reason to do it. Maybe a major economic benefit if you control the Oblast, or if uh, Kislev-like factions control the Oblasts, to a degree or another. Something along those lines. But even then, the terrain here, in, in the East in particular, would still make that kind of campaign a nightmare uh, to deal with. The terrain generally needs some work, I think. And therein lies the problem, from my perspective, with it. The way they designed the provinces here is not great. I mean, granted, this in this region of the game, this entire region of the game where the Warriors of Chaos used to spawn in Warhammer 1 and 2, has never really been a good one. It's always been a bit of a, a terrible one, but it's especially bad if you're trying to exp if you're playing a faction that might want to hold that, then you're constantly exposed to attacks, and you don't have the tools to really hold them back properly, and they'll just run in circles around you. Don't let them do that. Ignore them. Literally, ignore them. They won't attack your cities. They won't threaten uh, Kislev or Prague or hell, even help it. I held help it for a, for a fairly long time in this campaign and then just decided to give it to Krakodrak. Anyway, that's all I had to say. Questini here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, enable notifications, and I'll see you next time. Plenty of issues. I don't know which campaign I'm going to play next. I think I'm done with playing Kisa for a while because at the moment, even if you do succeed in, with them in the campaign, like a good campaign isn't just based on success or failure. It's like it just feels very wrong. The playstyle just feels very, very wrong to me. Like you're the, the, the bulwark of the North. You're not the conquerors and unifiers of the Empire. And yet, that's the best possible thing you can do in your campaign. I find that silly. Stay tuned for more.